Hello and welcome. I am Kishala Bharacharji and on behalf of India International Center New Delhi, I welcome you to watch Nodir Kul Nai or The River Has No Banks. Nodir Kul Nai is a short documentary that features singers, boatmen and everyday life of the chores or the sandbanks that dot the river Brahmaputra or the Red River. The inhabitants here are known as Miyas or Bengali Muslims who may have migrated from erstwhile East Bengal or Bangladesh now or may have lived here for generations. After all, this was one land and it is the same river on either side. The river doesn't know boundaries, it just flows. In the film, through songs and poetry, the Miyas explored their relationship with the river, their struggle for survival and the larger issue of migration and identity. They are as much outsiders as water is to land. Directed by Parashal Barua, the film was produced by Abha Films, commissioned by Art East, 2019 edition, which was titled Brahmaputra and Imagination. It was first screened out there, and then it was selected in the competition section of the 12th International Documentary and Short Film Festival in Kerala. This is the first time the film is being released formally, the film was shot with the help of people from Arikati, Purangao, and Sonpoli in Kamrup, Assam, on the banks of the river Brahmaputra. And the crew of Rukmajit Barua and Nayan Bhuya were in sound, Chandra Kumar in camera, Zedrin Pukan in editing, and Mayuri Rajkur as executive producer. I must acknowledge Shalin Hussain, poet and scholar who helped out with the research, and Mirza Lutfur Rahman and Amin Islam who provided location support. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting you Nodir Kul Nai, followed by a discussion with the director, Parashar Baru. Are you re pagela no di ki moya la gaili re shuker boshot korli re sahara sari are you re pagela ami 10 11 bochor pore theke ami gaan dile rakhi amar naam kurjutali argedi bor argedi তারমানে এই বাইটাই লেগে আনা আমরা কনে কখন কই যখন আমাকে বাড়ি ঘর ভেঙে নিয়ে যায় আমরা যখন এক সর থেকে আরক সরে যাই বস্তু বাহিনী নাই করে উড়িয়ে তখন মনে রাবেকে মনে রিয়ে তখন আমরা এই বাইটাই লেগে আন গাই বাড়ি ঘর ভেঙে নিয়ে যায় গাঙ্গো ঠিক সে তো যে মানুষের গায় গায়করা মানিক কানা গেছে মানিক কানা যখন এই আমাকে এই গরু সর ভেঙে গেল বাড়ি ঘর সব নিয়ে গেল গা তখন মানিক কানা এই সরাইয়ে এই গানটা গাইছে আমি তাই মানিক কানার কাছে কোনো শিখছি গানটা হলো আর ও পাগলা নদী সুখের বসত করলে সারাসারি তার মানে নদীতে যখন পার নদী ভেঙে গেল আমরা যা মানুষ আসিলাম সব এক মি একজন গেলাম গা কেরা করে গেছে খবর নেই সাথী সারা হয়ে গেছে এই জন্য পাগলা নদী নদী পাগলা করে ভেঙে আল দিছে আরে ও রে পাগলা নদী কি ময়ালা রে সুখের বসত করলি রে সাহারা সারি কেহুর বাংলি জমি রে জমা কারবা বাংলি টিনের সৌরি মোর বাঙ্গিলি নতুন পীরিতি আরে ও রে পাগেলা নদী কি ময়ালা গাইলি রে সুখের বসত করলি রে সাহারা সারি কেউ যায় রে মন্দিরাতে কেউ গেল গরুর সহরে কেহু যায় রে নরি কাটাহারি যাপে 
हरे यो रे पागेला नदी कि मया लगली रे सुखेर बसोत कर ली रे सहारा सारी सुखेर बसोत कर ली रे सहारा सारी सुखेर बसोद कर ली रे सहारा सारी मर हार काला कोरला हमरे यार देहो काला रिलाई गारी आमी अंतर काला कोरला मेरे
नईपुरिया मानु सरसापुर बस करूर चार नई ठीक मजते कई घर मान के थकिया है कनबा बस उठाई लो जाए आको सर पड़े ताते आम घर बांधु जैसे बारिषा बानपानी है चार केवल बानपानी बानपानी उजान फल कई घर भांगी लो गल इफाले चाई और दुघर लो गल पिछदिना और एक लो गल एने थकोते आम एघर रोलो दुघर रोलो तैयार कि करूँ कि नक आम निरूपाय जाओ आम तो सवता कौन ना जीतु आम चर चपर मानू कने आम चाय सृष्टिकर्ता मालिक लगे स्रण करूँ और गान मन आक्षेप गाँव पार गीत बुली क्या है जे आम मरल भगवान आल्ला नकत्य पाँ जो आम उठा लो जाए यह आवेग लगे गाँव एने गान सृष्टि आम आजू कका आम आता आम देवता आम आजू कक आगर पर चल से चतुर्दे पानी पानी एकुलगुल भरिया जाए तक ये गान गुना गई मैं कुल किनारा नाई दरिया मत जे रख आगे नदी छो चतुर्दी जो पानी भरिया जाए तक सागर मत देखा जाए ना भांगा इपारे थी जो पारे जो ताओ मैं सहस है ना सहस नाई अंतरे गान गाँव मान आल्ला डाका आल्लर का खूब आराधना करी जे सागर मत ये गलो एन कुल किनारा नाई कौन पारे बा जाए मैं अस्थायी थी क्या स्थायी नाई पानी पानी सब जगह ये मन दुखे आवेगे सब गान गई आल्ला आरोन आई गई
Hello, Parashar. Hi, Kishore. Thank you for having me here. And it feels great to be back on, I, on IIC for in whichever way and, and now in 2020 as a Zoom chat, but great to be associated with IIC and with artists. If you could tell us a little bit about how the film was shot, where did you shoot it, 
Why did you shoot it? Well, well, in 2019, uh, artists came up with the theme of the Brahmaputra or like looking at the Brahmaputra. I was uh, obviously was trying to find out how else can I look at the river and how else can I look at you know, communities living by the river since I've already uh, done extensive work in Marjuli. I thought of you know looking at it from a completely fresh perspective and and the Mia community and and their their story came to my mind. This community has always been a uh, you know quite a disputed community, uh, given their history that we have had in Assam, and, and the recent uh, climate of the NRC and all of these things had got me thinking anyway about about this and about the larger issue of identity and and being an Assamese. So I felt this was a great opportunity to to look at a riverine community uh, by the Brahmaputra. And at the same time, maybe look at answers, bigger answers for me as an Assamese. And I thought, you know, their songs would be a good uh, beginning, good way to explore or engage with this community. Songs, traditionally, they carry their stories, you know, stories of migration, stories which have been passed on from one generation to the other. So I felt if I can uh, say it through their songs or explore their songs, I think this will be a good beginning. And... Uh... You know, you met them in a very volatile climate because Assam at that point of time was going through the contentious uh, you know, national register yes. process. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a majority of people who did not find their names who are still out of the list are uh, uh, from that community. Uh, though one really doesn't know the exact number of people, I mean, of the, of the composition of people. Yeah. Now, was there some kind of resentment? Was there suspicion of why you are doing that film at that point of time? You know, uh, and your own personal dynamic, you know, you, you uh, for the viewers, uh, you know, who are not familiar with uh, Assam and the landscape of Assam, and when I'm saying landscape, I'm, I mean the political landscape. It's very different because Parashar, uh, though he's a, a film professional from Mumbai, but he grew up and he comes from Upper Assam. And uh, the area that we are talking about is actually Lower Assam. And Upper Assam and Lower Assam anyway are divided just like any other part of the, any other state or any other part of the world. But in this, the dynamic is, is extremely sharp. The division is very sharp. So for you and for you, it was a, also a new experience. For, you know, a, a boy who grew up in Dibrugar in Upper Assam is now on the banks of the Brahmaputra in Lower Assam. So how did you negotiate that? I grew up with, with this. This is my history. I mean, the, the history of, uh, of the political struggle that we have had in Assam is also my history. And the fact that um, forget Upper Assam, Lower Assam. The whole issue of the illegal Im uh, immigration and and has been a large part of who we are as Assamese and what our you know our our politics has been about. And so this has definitely and I grew up being affected by it. Even though you know I've stayed away in Mumbai, or probably because of the reason I've been away in Mumbai, gain a new perspective on on this issue. And when this the when the NRC issue came up, that got me thinking of my basic claim as an Assamese, when, when that itself was being questioned about who and what makes me an Assamese, or, or rather the fact that you now have a committee set up to even decide who an Assamese is. My, probably my, my most basic claim as, as a person after being a human being was the fact that I was an Assamese. I and mean, that's just in, in, in almost my 40 years, that is what I have always carried around, the fact that I am an Assamese. But that very existence got questioned and that got me thinking about how if it was so difficult for me to prove who I am because of this whole NRC process, how difficult would it be for, uh, for a community who anyway ha has historically been vilified, historically has been othered and for whatever reason. So my decision was to first engage and first understand and uh, because I always believe that, you know, migration is not something that is a, a that that stopped at a point of history. It, it has flowed, it will keep flowing. And uh, so what makes their claim to this land lesser or, you know, um, or higher than my claim? It's a process that, you know, I want to start talking about because these are questions that I have in my mind. And I felt through this documentary or through, you know, meeting them, 
it was my first step to first know them and uh, and no in fact i mean if you when you first began the question of whether it was difficult no it wasn't difficult in fact they were very welcoming so in fact it, it is strange that, that you know just, as an just, yeah just to interrupt you Par- yeah. parasha out here in fact uh, you know exactly what you are saying just now but yeah. just to put it into context for the viewers is that yeah. how did you identify these singers i mean you know we know uh, both men are there uh, and i'm when i watched the film i was introduced to uh, a new genre called pargi because we are familiar with bhatiyali yes and i presumably bhatiyali and pargi will be uh, similar right. but still it's a genre and uh, but how did you get uh, you know introduced to or familiar uh, to these people uh, and to this genre of music what got me got me interested in this community is actually uh, the mia poetry uh, which again in 2016 was another movement which was a new voice that was coming out from this community that got me interested in you know what the this this new form of expression scholars like hafiz ahmed and uh, shalim hussein and they got me uh, interested in in their in, in what they were trying to do so i felt you know rather than just talking about the mia poet context at the way they were trying to do something which is very very political i wanted to go a little further back and find out you know where this community came from and whether what their stories were and so it's, that's why the songs and bhatiyali uh, we've always grown up in knowing that bhatiyali is of bangladeshi origin or of bengali origin but the fact that it's actually just like as the river brahmaputra it has grown around the banks of the ganga and the brahmaputra it has flown and just like the community it it has migrated and so there is no one particular geographical area which you can say that bhatiyali only comes from here so this region where this community is from in the village santoli or arikati where the where the villagers are so they have also been singing songs that have been passed down from their own ancestors ancestors who have come and settled in those villages you know these are not songs that are singing that they are only singing jasimuddin song they are not singing only songs that are sung by boatmen in bangladesh or in bengal but they are singing songs that have actually been sung by their own ancestors in this particular reach and so that made it very topical to know or to understand okay these are songs that spoke about their own history the history and their connect with the river of how they had to cope with the river the how they had had developed this relationship this understanding with this mad massive mad river who when it, when during the winters when it is calm it's fine but at during the floods it knows no boundaries it just flows or so the fact that they have adapt, learned to adapt themselves or learn to live with this river was a great story in itself and i felt these these songs that are that you, that you saw featured in the film talk primarily about the relationship with the river where one song describes the river as a as a mad pagla nodi and and the same the same song talks about how you know they have they have been displaced and they 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 lost their homes to the erosion and they have to now move to the other island this this has been a story forget about you know this has been a story of these very villagers the person who was singing it kurjat ali kai he himself has you know has suffered it for half the year because of the floods there so these are songs which are very personal at the same time they are they are talking about you know their history their history of migration their history of displacement and and so so i felt you know you know this these were perfect representation of the stories and if you notice the film doesn't have too many interviews you know i felt the st- songs were powerful enough to tell the story so so i just let these songs speak for themselves and and the setting was very basic this was a winter night where you know we filmed about 20 to 25 songs and this was just free flowing and we and not just par geet or bhatiyali geet but they they were singing bhajans they were singing baul songs i i i regret the fact that i could only choose three songs for, for this particular cut but there are many songs and they also sang in assamese i mean i i heard them singing yes. in assamese yes and and uh, unfortunately this is not part of the assamese uh, you know musicology or, or, or absolutely the, not or, absolutely the fact that you know in 2020 2019 this was a discovery even for me the fact that i go to another corner of of my own state and 
and get exposed to a whole new uh, genre of songs, whole new community of singing, in, uh, which has never been accepted or never been brought out and acknowledged as also part of Assamese culture. Language has always played a very important role, especially in, a, in a, Assam and this, this whole clash between Bengali and Assamese is traditionally, I don't, I don't need to tell you or for the matter the audience about, about that. But if you notice, this is also true about this community. There have been always been a constant battle about you know their language and how that has affected or affected their you know their identity as being Assamese. Because what you also know that over the years, many different censuses, you know, historically and around uh, now that the CAS has happened, so there was this whole thing of where they were taking taking Assamese as an official language. Yet in their homes, they still you know speak a dialect which is largely Bengali. So so this dichotomy, this 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 thing is there constantly, which I felt was a great way also of showing this, these kind of multicultural identities we have had in the Sam. You know, even if the most of the indigenous uh, Assamese or indigenous tribals or ethnic groups also have their own language, and yet they have stronger claims to the land. And you'll notice, um, or it might have been too subtle, but if you notice in 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 the in the film, one of the singers actually he switches between Assamese and and Bengali. It, it was a very small point. Yeah. I felt that actually you know, said everything to me. I didn't want to overqualify it. I didn't want it to, you know, to underline it any further because people who knew would know this was actually something that, you know, this is, this is so in, in them about, about being multilingual, about being bilingual, about speaking both in Assamese and Bengali. And that actually is their story. The story of, you know, them trying to, you know, yeah. The, the, film, the film opens with Kujarat Ali, Yes, you know, moving from his walking down from his village to the cart. Yes, and he sits on the boat and he sings. Yeah, um, you know, it's all, it's almost uh, an exotic uh, experience for an urban city dweller. Uh, however, you know, for to remind uh, the viewers and to remind ourselves that Assam is yet again going through a. a wave of flood and you know we know how devastating the river Brahmaputra can be uh, and as a matter of fact however poignant it can be uh, when this film was being shot these people Kujarat Ali and others were actually holding on to whatever they had despite the floods so that they can protect the papers required for the NRC and for the uh, for the citizenship process. Uh, and that is something that you have witnessed. Uh, how difficult was it to actually uh, talk to them about it during a time when they are going through floods at the same time, um, you know, trying to prove their citizenship? Well, in, in fact, not just then, but even the whole year after that, I mean, this has been the struggle to hold on to their paper is a bigger struggle than holding on to their own material possessions because they know if they lose those pieces of paper which talks about their legacy talks about you know their claim to something which could be a could be a certificate issued by the local uh, local government or could be a school leaving certificate these are precious and so much so not just you know a year before i started making filming but even the year since so when, in fact, when last year and most of the villagers were going through this flood and they were asked to move out into the relief camps, they held on, they didn't go because they, they knew that, you know, if they moved out of that place, you know, they probably, their claim to the, that place would be gone. So they held on to the piece of paper, you know, in, in, in high ground in their own villages because they didn't want to move out. And I saw that, you know, over the over last end of last year when the CAA debate was going on and they were called for call for NRC, NRC hearings. Unfortunately, in fact, villagers, you know, from one of the neighboring villages lost their lives in a, in a, in a bus accident when they had to be overnight called to Upper Assam to appear at an NRC. So the piece of paper becomes very important. And things that we, we as Assamese take for granted has become their lifeline. So, so that piece of document has become very, very important for them. Yes. So now that the area is again flooded um, are you filming uh, the area again are you planning to uh, do a sequel to this uh, documentary or you mentioned that 
you believe in how the community can be actually uh, enabled to uh, document and archive their own lives. I do want to do lo a longer film because I feel there's so much that needs to be explored uh, with, right from their songs to their history to the current political you know, uh, uh, struggle that they're going through about identity and explore more furthermore. And, and about the floods, I do, I want to spend some time with them during the floods. Unfortunately, late this year, it's, it's, been, it's been quite challenging otherwise. What the, the best thing that has happened is the, the community have started you know, doing, uh, documenting themselves. And two of the boys who all, were also helpful in making the film, and um, they, have, they have started documenting their, their life there. And, and they've started, uh, they've opened a YouTube channel and they have, they've been filming stories from the community about how you know the hardship that they are going through during the floods. So they have also you know uh, re released some of the videos there. So although I'm not documenting them, it myself, but there's there's documentation happening as we speak, and that's very heartening to know that you know they, they don't need a Parasha Barua anymore to go go there. They're doing it themselves, and uh, not that I, I I claim to be an enabler, but that has happened in the last one year since since my film uh, happened. So somewhere, and I, I'm glad that I've been associated, I've been part of some kind of a change there. And uh, yes, so, it, so they, their films are very direct and I keep telling that, you know, they need to tell their own stories and solely then they will be heard. So yes, and uh, I'll, I'll share some of, the, of their uh, work. I, I, uh, they have it on YouTube, so I'll just share some. Yeah, if you, yeah, yeah. If you can show us some of the, yes. uh, some of the uh, work that they have done. <laughs> সমগ্র সম্প্রতি বানর কবলত বানাক্রান্ত লাখ লাখ জনতার এটা দুর্দশার সীমা নোহা হয়েছে বানপানী এটা প্রাকৃতিক পরিঘটনা নহয় অসমত বানপানী এটা প্রাকৃতিক দুর্যোগের রূপত বছরি জনসাধারণ জীবন দুর্দশা নমায় আনে এই দুর্যোগর বাহক ব্রহ্মপুত্র নদীর মাজত অবস্থিত স্বর্গাও সমূহ বসবাস করা লোকসল এটা অতি জটিল অবস্থা বানপানিয়ে ইতিমধ্যে এওলোকর সমগ্র শস্যর পথার বিনষ্ট করে থ গল মানুষের নাও ডাক দুর্ভাগ্য যে এটা বানাক্রান্ত এই সরুয়া লোকসল আজীবন সঙ্গী হয়ে পড়ছে যুগ যুগ ধরে এনেদরে বরলুইতর বানে সরুয়া লোকসল জীবন নমায় অনা দুঃখ দুর্দশা তথা সীমাহীন সমস্যায় সমাধানের বাট বিচারি পাবল আর কি যুগর প্রয়োজন হব চর্চা পরিবাসীর এয়া এটা মূল প্রশ্ন Parashar for uh, the discussion. Thank you viewers for tuning in and uh, watching the movie and joining the discussion. Uh, we will be looking forward to your feedback. You can get in touch with 
either Parashar or I or Art East or India International Center on our social media handles. And hopefully we will be able to bring you more films of singers, boatmen on the rivers.